how did the <laughs> there was this legendary Fat Joe issue that you had at a certain mm -hmm. point, which I know you guys are on good terms now and everything. Mm -hmm. How the fuck did that happen while you were dating his artist? Well, Fat Joe is is my brother. You know what I'm saying. And so he, you were cool before this. This was like a brief period where you weren't cool. I'm gonna tell you this. <laughs> he he's my brother. You know what I mean. He's my daughter's godfather. Mm. You know what I'm saying. So I really can't. I don't even really want to speak on, on upon that. I can just okay. say that's a. He's a great person, man. I love him, and that's my brother. Was you know that I mean? the type of situation that sort of made it so that the industry was less uh, interested in you in working with you as an artist at a certain point? Was that one of the situations you were alluding um, to? Nah, nah, nah. Fat Joe was my brother, great guy. I love him. That's all I can say, man. You mm. know what I mean? I really don't. I, I don't speak on that. You know what I mean? Respect for sure. Mm -hmm. What about the Uncle Murder one? Can we do that? Uh, nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, man. Okay. Nah, for sure. man. Shout, that, out, shout out to him, man. That's you know that growth. Mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. Shout out to him. I wish him the best, man. I don't 100%. got nothing negative to say about nobody. One thing that kind of occurred to me this weekend, because I saw your wife at the rap battle up front. Mm -hmm. she, she, she took, she, A, she, I think she was the only person with security there. B, she took a folding chair up front so that she didn't have to stand up, which I was a brilliant move that <laughs> nobody else had the balls to do that, but she just did it. And I'm like, everybody in here wishes that they did that. Well, well hey, look, the security is there to protect people from her. By all means. Not the yeah, other way yeah. around, because guess what? People provoke you. Yeah. See, we learned this from experience. People provoke you, and then when you react to the bullshit they do, they want to sue you. And the TMZ article is about you. <laughs> right. The, the so, TMZ article is making you look like a hothead. So those people are just there to protect people from getting themselves hurt mm. so they don't get a lawsuit. Definitely. <laughs> um, but it occurred to me in that environment because mm -hmm. they had Cassidy and Freeway come out and announce that they're going to do an official battle, which oh, I wow. think is amazing for hip hop overall, battle rap culture Definitely, in general, man. like just bringing that back, reminding everybody of how intense that lyrical battle was back in the man, day. Shout out to them. And so meanwhile, I'm, I'm watching them do this announcement and Remy's sitting right there watching. And I just thought, hey. Papoose would be such a no-brainer to kill it in that <laughs> environment. I don't know if, if you've thought about it or, or would you ever be tempted to, to battle? Um, man. There's a stigma associated <laughs> with it, but I swear the stigma got to go away at some point. What you mean when you say stigma? It's just not maybe looked at as the coolest thing. It's maybe looked at so. as like kind of a lyrical nerd type thing to be involved <laughs> with. And, you know, I, I understand that. <laughs> nah, nah, But, I man. mean, you could clearly, I'm sure you could handle yourself in that environment. I love battle rap, man. Let me say that first. Those guys are gladiators. Hmm. And I salute all of them. Hi, salute. They know that. I go to the events and I tell them when I see them, yo, you dope, you dope. You know what I mean? I give, I give respect and I give props. I came up doing that, man. Mm. I, I, like I was telling you earlier, I used to do that shit when I was so little, man. I used to do it a lot. And then when I came and became a recording artist, I kind of felt like I grew. You know what I'm saying? I, mm -hmm. I made it here. Um, you never know, man, what the future holds. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't even want to, you know, normally I say, nah, I'm, I'm cool because I'm such a fan of it. I just enjoy watching it. Mm. You know what I mean? If, if it's a, the right offer, you never know. It's getting you know more I mean? mainstream, man. Drake, Drake's they, they, birthday party they just gotta was that event. It, they got to make it really worth it for me, man. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And you never know. They're throwing around some pretty big bags, <laughs> but I don't know if they're Papoose bags. But, mm. <laughs> I mean, if it's a Cassidy bag or a Freeway bag, I'm sure that they're not trying to do it those for are, the low level. Those are so, legends. Yeah. Those those are legends. You got a great point. Mm. You never know what the future holds, man. Yeah. I, I, won't, I won't shut it down. 100%. But, I mean, you have uh, talked about potentially retiring. Like, that's kind of been yeah. out there in the news and everything mm -hmm. like that. What What is that that stands out to you that maybe you don't want to keep doing this forever? Uh, basically, um, I have. I want to focus on my investments. Mm. I want to focus on my family more. And um, I gave a lot of years of my life to music. So this year, when the year started, I said, you know what? I'm going to release an EP every month this year titled after the current month. Wow. And... By the grace of God, I was able to do that. I got 10 EPs out this year so far. And I wanted to do that. Part of the reason was to say thank you to all the fans who supported me over the years. And my plan was, yo, I'm going to do it every month, every EP, all the way up to December, and then I'm going to retire. That's it for me. Mm. And so many people have been on my head about it. Buster called me the other day. He's like, yo, you're not retiring. Mm. I'm not letting you retire. You know what I'm saying? Um, so many people was like, yo, you can't do it. But that's what I want to do, and that's that's my plan. That was my plan in the beginning. Do you feel like if you retire that it would kind of close the door on that chapter of your life and let you focus on all the stuff you have going now yeah, because more? I'm going to tell you what it is. When you're so passionate about something the way I am about music, mm. 
it becomes you. Mm. You know what I mean? Throughout my life, it was always, all right, Pap, you know what I mean? He, he's talented with music. This is his craft. He love it. Um, this is what I do. And it became me. Whether I was in the street, you know what I mean? When I went legit and started getting into real estate and doing great things, music was still always a part of me and my true passion. So I truly, in a way, I don't know who I am outside of this. Mm. So I kind of want to close that chapter of my life so I can explore new things, focus on my family more. I got a two-year-old daughter. She's amazing, the most beautiful thing that ever happened to me. And, you know, I have Seeing other how children. hard you guys went with, in terms of how important it was for you guys to have a child was a very, I, I have an 11-month-old right now. That just really warmed my heart to see that you guys both Yeah, it was so hard for Cared so much uphill. about doing that, even though it was so difficult. It was uphill, you know, miscarriages, you know, the prison thing. Yeah. There was so many things that got in our way. And finally, we got my daughter. And I just want to make sure I give her as much of me as possible. Mm. I have other children, and they tell you I'm a great father. But I was always yeah. grinding and chasing Running around, things. Trying to now I'm in a something. more comfortable space in my life, and I just want to enjoy life with my, with my daughter. I don't want to be you know, chasing a music career throughout her life, you know? Right. I don't, I don't want to be doing that. And, um, you know, so it's in my plans, man. A lot of people telling me don't do it, but it, it's been a part of my plan, right? And, and you know what's crazy? Also, I said, yo, to be honest, also I said to myself, I said, if I don't get the respect... I feel I deserve by the end of this year, me dropping the EP every month. Mm. It's even more reason for me to, to leave. But now I've had so much success, it's crazy. Right. I had so much success. I'm talking about Timberland, Swiss Beats. You know what I'm saying? I've been able to work with, with so many legends. Uh, Little Wayne, you know what I mean? The list goes on. Yeah. Uh, me and Fab just did a joint. You know what I mean? Me and Fab, a shout out to him. Anthony Hamilton, I've been, and in all these records, the Wayne record is taking off crazy. So. Yeah. Now that I'm in retirement is in my plan, here comes the success, you know what I mean, that I've been looking for. But I don't know. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, on one hand, if you were to kind of shut the door on it, well, well one, one thing I was going to ask is, did you kind of, like, start to think more about that, of maybe it would be more enjoyable to be behind the scenes in terms of uh, working on the music industry because you were sort of involved with Remy's career for a long time and yeah, you're, you're helping lot, her man. make the right moves and make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the day, you're not the one getting out there on stage and having to really be yeah. the star of the show. Mm -hmm. I wore the management hat for my wife for a while and I, and I learned a lot doing that. So like you said, you genius. I, I was like, yo, I can do a lot more, you know, from behind the scenes. I can yeah. push some artists. I can do some ghostwriting. You know what I mean? There's a lot of things I can do where I don't have to really uh, dedicate so much of my time. Right. So you've done the ghostwriting thing. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Um, it's something I want to get into okay. very, very heavy. I want to. 